Okay, this is Year 11 Data Handling Video Part 2, and for this video, we're just going to focus on how to actually turn curved line graphs into straight lines. So from the last video, you should have been able to get up to this point where you have uh, the two variables, gravitational force, and this is between two objects, plotted on a graph and showing that they have an inverse relationship or a power relationship where the indice is actually negative. So we're at this point. So to actually talk about the next little bit, I'm just going to copy this across um, to OneNote and actually just go through some of the analysis as to what we need to plot to actually turn this into a straight line. Now, at the back of your mind, you might be wondering, why are we doing this? Like, we've got this curved line graph. Why are we trying to get a straight line? Well, ultimately, for high school physics, it's because of the fact that you are very, very comfortable with straight lines. You've done lots of work with straight lines. You know how to find a gradient. You know how to find an intercept. So it's actually really handy to be able to turn graphs into straight lines so you can find out even more information about them. So... Before I copy it across, um, something that I didn't talk about last time is the fact that some of these um, labels are probably a bit small for when I actually stick it into my OneNote. So I'm just going to make the font a little bit bigger, all round, on the axes. And while I'm here, I might also um, just edit some of these data points so that, um, so that it's a bit more clear. And what you can do is you can just click on the data point, um, right click, and you can format the trend line first. So you can actually get the trend line to look a little bit darker if you don't like blue, and I don't. I actually want it to fit a different color, so black. That'll be handier for me to see everything else. Try not to set up a black background on your graphs just because it's really hard to print or see or read. So I'm just going to copy this over to my OneNote. It's ready to go. And here is my graph. Now, um, notice that I've already got my formula, which is written there. So I am going to just rewrite the formula over here on the right-hand side so that I've actually got it set up with the variable R actually on the bottom and the indice as a positive. So that's literally what the formula um, of the line is. Let's come up with that. And I've actually put FG versus R. To get a straight line, it's very simple. So what you need to do is just try to collect all the constants that you have. So 333.5 is my constant. And I'm going to push um, my variable to the back here by its little self. So I can actually write it like this, and it's actually still the same thing. Hopefully no one's mind is blown by that. And we are actually trying to match it to something that you are very familiar with. So you are very familiar with y equals to mx plus c. In this particular case, there is no c, um, since that's not my formula. But I do now have a gradient which is M, and I now have a new thing that I need to plot, which is not R, but 1 on R squared. If I plot FG versus 1 on R squared, I am going to get a straight line. Okay, so to prove this, I'm going to go quickly to Excel. I should get Excel to do some calculations for me. Okay, in Excel, here's what we need to do. Um, I'm just going to type in my variable that I need. So it's 1 over distance between two objects squared. Probably should put a bracket around it. Squared. I'll make that into a superscript later. Um, and then 1 over r squared. And the units can't be meters anymore because if I'm doing one over the distance between the two objects squared, this will have to be one over meters squared. Now, I could have stuck with the negative indice, but just for the sake of this exercise, I'm just going to make these one over. So that would be superscript. Superscript. And 
last one. Super script. So now I've got my variable and my symbol and also my units. All right, um, I'm now going to get Excel to do the calculation so that we, this will be equal. 1 over, just open brackets, a2 to the power of 2. So I'm just getting it to choose that column of value. And obviously, 1 over 1 squared is 1. And if you drag this down, um, by dragging, you can see that um, there's a little um, solid little box there. If you put your mouse over it, come a little cross, hold down left click and drag down, it would then fill automatically. I'm just going to make these a bit more consistent in terms of um, the number of decimal places and so or the number of uh, significant figures. So the first number here, I'm just going to stick with 0, 1.0. These are two significant figures. Now here, these column, these values down here, the placeholders, the 0, 0.0, they are not actually significant. So what we want to do is we want to just push these the other way, up a little bit. So now they become two significant figures. Be more consistent. And to make this beautiful table, just put some lines around it. So that's pretty much done. Center line. Perfect. Now, this time around, I'm actually not going to plot this. I'm just going to move this graph further down. I am going to plot um, FG versus this. Now, if you follow the same process as last time, if you go to insert and go to graph, you'll actually get something like this, which most students go, yes, it's a straight line. Um, however, there's a slight problem. Um, can you now stop watching the video, turn to your neighbours and talk about what the issue is right here. 